Algebra 2, this is 5.5, solving polynomial equations. So we've already done a lot of this, I think, back in Chapter 4. I made you go through a whole bunch of factoring. So we're just going to quickly talk about this, show you the, the scale or the, the idea of all of this. And you got to remember that polynomials are things that generally we can try to factor. We try to make them, break them down into their smaller pieces. So right now I have the difference of cubes and the sum of cubes. These are, remember, the same exact formula. It's kind of like the, sum, uh, the difference of squares. And your whole idea is to break it down so that you know what's being cubed minus what's being cubed, and therefore you can e expand it using these two factors. So there's a whole list of things that we talked about when we were factoring. And here is that list. I tried giving it to you before. You always find your greatest common factor. You look for the do difference of squares, a squared minus b squared, the sum and difference of cubes, which are here on the last page as well. We look for perfect square trinomials. We look for general trinomi trinomials. Is a equal to 1, a not equal to 1? And then, therefore, you have grouping when a is not equal to 1. So when you have more four or more even terms, that's a good one to use for grouping. So that was what we had to do there. So if I wanted to factor this particular problem here, this uh, something to the fourth power, and actually I see that it's a fourth power here. You're thinking to yourself, okay, I see two terms, but this is y to the fourth. That's not a perfect cube. That could be a perfect square. But then I look over here and say, hey, there's a y there, and it's z to the third. z to the third is definitely maybe not a perfect square, but it's a perfect cube. But I have a y there. That doesn't seem to work. But then you've got to remember back to rule one. Rule one said, take the thing, biggest things that you could take from everybody. You're like, wait a minute. I could take a y out of both of those. So I go to take a y. And then you're like, wait a minute. 5, 320. I could take a 5 out of there, too. So I ended up with y cubed minus, now 320 divided by 5. Well, 300, or 30 divided by 5 is 6, so it's 60 for 300. 20 would give you 4, so 64. Z cubed would be left. Now the question I guess it comes down to is, y to the third a perfect cube? Yeah. Is 64 a perfect cube? Yes, a 4 and z cubed is z. So if you remember back to what I had you do before, you would want to fill in to find a and b. So it's y being cubed to get y cubed, and it's 4z to get to 64z cubed. That's a and that's b. I will plug it into this formula right here. So I get y minus 4z times y, z, y squared plus y times 4z plus, and I'm going to have to go sideways here, 4z squared. So when I go to clean this up, I'm going to get y minus 4z times y squared plus 4 y z plus 16 z squared and you have now just factored that problem so the biggest thing in this lesson is to break it down we're going to have to use factoring techniques things like that and the really the next thing that we're going to talk about is um well here's another factoring one before we get into what i want to get into the next lesson Notice there are one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So since there are six terms, I'm actually going to group this. I'm hoping you recognize that in the first three, they are definitely divisible by an even number, like a two or a ah, six. And they all have an x in them. So I am going to put parentheses around the first three and then the last three. I'll we'll see what I can do here. I think I can take a 6x out of that. And if I take a 6x out, I get 5a, right, when I divide 30ax by 6x. 
And if I take and take negative 24bx divided by 6x, I get a minus 4b and then plus c. So we were able to pull all of that 6x out of all three of those. Now I've got to go to the second group and pull something out of all three of them, hoping that I end up with the same thing inside. So if I look real close, I think I can take, now remember that 5a has to be positive. So I'm going to take a negative something. I'm going to take a negative y squared. And if I take a negative y squared, I think I can take it from everyone. And I get 5a plus Oh, not plus because I'm taking a negative, minus 4b, and then plus c. I have the same thing. And remember from factor by grouping that these are the same, so I'm going to take it. So if I take it, now I can put together the stuff on the outside. Minus y squared. And you've just factored by grouping. Difference of squares, so the difference of squares, again, is a squared minus b squared. Find that pattern. So if I want to factor a to the 6 minus b to the 6, you need to recognize that a to the 6 is really something squared. And that's a cubed, b cubed. So therefore, I get a cubed minus b cubed, and a squared minus b, not squared, cubed plus b cubed. Now wait a minute. Here's the problem. When you're factoring, you got to keep going and going and going. Both of those end up being the ones from the other page of the sum and the difference of cubes. So notice that it's actually a and b for a cubed b cubed. So therefore, I get a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. This is just basically copying down the formulas. And this one's a plus b, and then a squared minus a b plus b squared. Hint, guys, the parts that are the trinomials of the sum and difference of square cubes cannot be factored. So you actually are done. And the last part here is that fact that you have a quadratic form. Quadratic form, this is a quadratic, that's that trinomials where you know to look for the factors of a times c or just find the factors of a. What they want you to do is take problems that you can fit into this form. Do you notice that the, this x term is x to the sixth, but the next one is x to the third? What you need to realize is that this can fit the mold where if I square x cubed, I end up being x to the 6. So if I let n equal x cubed, I'll end up with 12n squared plus 4n plus 1. That, to me, is a lot easier to factor than it will be to factor the original with a sixth power in it. So I look for when you're dealing with higher powers in only three terms, is this thing a square of the other term, as in the variable? So I have to do 12 times 1, which is 12. Find the factors of 12. 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. So I think I may have copied this wrong because I don't see any of those that could give me a 4 under the, the current conditions. As in, I need it to be both adding because both of these are adding. But if I add all of these, I'll end up with 13, 8, or 7. So I wonder if I copied this wrong. If I change this to a negative 1, now I do believe I can use these. So I'll have 12n squared plus 6n minus 2n because we're splitting it up. And now you should be able to factor by grouping again. So if I factor by grouping, first two, last two, include the sign, I'm going to take a 6n. So 2n plus 1. Okay, and I'm going to take a negative 2, or negative out, sorry, negative 
So that'd be 2n plus 1. So 2n plus 1 and squish the outsides together. That's a really a negative one. I have factored it. Now I left myself a note on the top corner. The top corner says, don't forget that if I had everything set equal to zero, what if I was saying, I want to find the zeros? Don't forget that zero product property that everything you just would have done is still set equal to zero. And so therefore, your last two factors are set equal to zero. So therefore, I'd set 2n plus 1 equal to zero. And I'd set 6n plus minus 1 equal to zero. Wait a minute. I made a mistake. I didn't finish the problem. My problem is not in n's. It is in x's. So therefore, i got to take the n out and put the x's back in. So this is 2x cubed plus 1 and 6x cubed minus 1. Now you can set each of these equal to 0 and you should be able to solve for those. So for your homework, all I want you to do is those problems that are not missing. Make sure you factor them completely. In 11 and 12 here, I want you to actually to solve for the zeros. Solve for the real and the imaginary. Have a great day.